Hey what's up guys, RxJS is a library which uses observables. We can create observables using RxJS for a variety of different stuff like arrays, async requests, streams, etc. If you are already using RxJS then you must have used the popular operators when subscribing to observables like merge, switch map, flat map, etc. But there are more functions available with RxJS which we normally never use but they are very useful in a number of different situations. In this video, I am going to demonstrate two such RxJS functions and will walk you guys through the code examples. Those functions are bind callback and generate. Bind callback can be used to convert a callback to function into an observable. Generate allows us to create a stream of values generated with a loop which is kind of similar to a normal for loop. Let's now take a look at these code examples one by one. First I will add the script tag in the head of this HTML document and the source of this script tag is pointing to the CDN URL of the minified RxJS library. Let's now create a new script tag in the body. The first one is the bind callback. The syntax to use the bind callback function is this. The input is a function with some parameters. The last parameter of this function must be a callback function that this function calls when it is done. When we will subscribe to the observable which is returned by calling the function of this bind callback, then the subscribe function can only take a single argument. So we use the selector function to convert multiple arguments into a single object. I will show you how this works within this code example. Async is for the observable to emit the results in async mode. Normally when we will not use the async argument, then the observable will emit the results in synchronous mode. But if we want the results to be emitted asynchronously, then we will have to use this argument. It is similar to set timeout with zero as duration. Now let's take a look at two simple code examples in which I will show you how we can use the bind callback function. For that first I will create a new function and let's call that function as fetch results. Now this fetch results function is going to accept two arguments. The first one is going to be a URL and the second one is going to be a callback. We are going to fetch the response from a URL using the fetch API of JavaScript. So let's just first get the response. So let response equals to fetch and then we will send in the URL as an argument. Now this will return a promise so we will have to use response.then and then inside this then we will have to provide a function which will be called when this promise will be successful. So for that we need to convert the results into the JSON object and when this operation will be successful then we will be returned with a new promise and when that promise will be successful then we will have the results and when we will have the results then we can simply call the callback function and we will send in the data as the argument for the callback function now we will use this fetch results function with this bind callback and for that let's first create a new variable and let's just call it as get results observable because when this function will be called then this will return a new observable so this can be created by using rxjs dot bind callback and inside this i'm going to provide this fetch results function as an argument now to get the observable we can again create a new variable let's just call it results now we need to call this get results observable by providing the suitable arguments for the url for the url i'm going to use the json placeholder dot type code get url for the to do's elements now it's time to subscribe to the results observable so results dot subscribe and we will need to provide the functions for three different values the first one is going to be the value which is going to be emitted the second one is going to be an error and the third one is going to be when this observable will be completed so first let's provide the arrow function for the data next let's provide the function which will be called when any error will be raised and the last one is going to be called when the observable is going to finish emitting all of the values now there is one thing to note with bind callback the function which we are providing as an argument in the bind callback function will only get called when we will subscribe to the observable which will be returned by calling this bind callback return value so let's now see how this code is working in the browser for that i'm going to use the live server extension so you can see that the array of to do's has been printed in the console and there is the complete message which we provided now let's take a look at another example in which i will show you how we can use the selector and the async arguments 
Let's create another function for the second example and this function is going to authenticate the username and password which is provided to it as an argument and when the credentials are successfully checked then the callback function will be called and the callback function will be provided with the arguments first if the credentials are successfully authenticated then the authenticated string will be provided and second one is going to be the authorization level which is hard coded as admin so you can see that the callback function is being provided with two arguments but the subscribe function only ever takes a single argument this is where we are going to need this selector argument or the selector function and let me show you how this will all going to work to create a selector function let's just create a new function and let's just call it as selector now this selector function is going to have two arguments the first one is going to be the result and the second one is going to be the authorization level what we will do is we are going to pack these two arguments into an object and then we will return the object as the return value from this selector function like this over here and now it's time to call the bind callback function so let's just do that let get authentication observable equals to rxjs dot bind callback and we need to provide the arguments for first the function which is authenticate the second one is the selector for the third argument, we need to tell the bind callback that this is going to be executed in async mode. So for that, I am going to provide rxjs.asyncscheduler property value. Now let's just get the observable by calling this get authentication observable function. So let authentication results equals to get authentication observable now we need to provide the username and password which is this one john and one two three because if we want the callback to be called then we need to provide these exact two values so let's just do that john and the second one is one two three now this authenticate function will get called when we will subscribe to this observable so let's just do that authentication results dot subscribe now over here for the arguments for the subscribe function we are going to get two values packed in a single object so to use those two arguments we need to use a single object as an argument and this object is packing the values for the result and authorization so result and authorization and we will also need to wrap this object in enclosing parenthesis so this is going to be an arrow function so First we will check if the user is authenticated or not and we can do that by checking if the result value is authenticated string if it is then the user is authenticated next we can write to the console the status of the authentication and then the value of the authorization level so let's just do that console.log if the authenticated is true then yes will be printed otherwise no will be printed to print the authorization first we can check if the user is authenticated or not if it is authenticated then we can log to the console the value of the authorization level so let's just do that now to test if this observable is emitting values in async mode we can write another value to the console because if it is in the async mode then this should print first and the result of the authentication should print after this statement because this is running in the synchronous mode now i'm going to comment out the previous subscription now let's see if this code is working or not so you can see that the message that we printed is printing first and then the authenticated yes is being printed the authorization level is admin now if i will provide incorrect password then let's see what happens i'm going to provide one two three and four this time an error has been thrown which is from over here invalid credentials because the credential is invalid so this is how we can use the selector and the async mode with the bind callback function so that was all about the bind callback function and now let's take a look at a very simple example of how we can use the rxjs generate function as i have told you earlier the generate function allows us to create a stream of values generated with a loop which is very similar to a normal for loop to use the generate function let's first create a variable and let's just call it values when we will call the rxjs.generate function then this will return a new observable to which we can subscribe the first argument of the generate function is going to be the initial state the second argument that we are going to use is the termination condition and the third argument that we are going to use is the iteration step function so let's just do that i'm just going to copy this line from over here to call the generate function so let's just paste it now for the initial state i'm going to provide the value 5 for the condition i'm going to provide a new function which is going to check if the number is less than or equal to 25 if it is not 
then the observable will stop emitting new values for the iterative function i'm going to provide another arrow function which is going to increment the value of this number by five in each iteration now to use this observable which is going to be returned from the generate function we need to subscribe to it and for that we need to call values dot subscribe and we need to provide a subscribe function so we are going to log each value to the console so let's just do that all right so now let's see in the console what is being printed so these are the results the initial state is 5 for each iteration we are incrementing its value by 5 and it is not going further than 25 and this is how we can use the generate function we can apply loads of operators on the values which are being returned from this generate functions observable we can change the termination condition we can change the iteration function to suit our needs and this is how we can use it and that is all that this video has to offer you guys do let me know what you think about it if you have any questions for the bind callback and generate function then feel free to use the comments area also if you think that you like this video then please place a like on it and also subscribe to the codefest channel to be always the first one to get to know about the new video updates i am nitej and i will see you in the next video till then take care of yourselves and have a great time